What's going on, YouTube? This is Ipsec. We're doing Unit 42 from Hack the Box, which is another Sherlock, which is a defensive challenge. In this one, we're going to be digging into some Sysmon logs. So let's head over to the Sherlock info page to see what this is about. It starts off telling us, yes, we're going to deal with Sysmon logs. And then it's based upon Unit 42, which is Palo Alto's Threat Intelligence and Instant Response Team. And they had published some research on an Ultra VNC campaign where the attackers utilized a backdoor version of Ultra VNC to maintain access to the system. So before we dig into the actual Sherlock questions, I always like just looking at how the Sherlock was inspired. So let's Google Unit 42 and then Ultra VNC. And you don't have to do this um, before doing the challenge, but I always find it interesting to read the actual threat intelligence report because it's gonna make the Sherlock feel a lot more real and you feel like you're in the seat of the um, researcher that's doing this, right? So it starts out with a email to a Dropbox link to a download executable, and that executable installs a Trojanized version of Ultra VNC. And then that allows the attackers to access the computers through VNC. So it talks about associated files. We have this prevent evo. Um, I don't know exactly what this application is. It's probably just some like um, application that people download and install and they just backdoored it and emailed to users. I'm not exactly clear on that, but then that will do some things, drop other files. So we have like on.cmd here, c.cmd, cmd.txt, taskhost.exe. Um, and these are all in c colon backslash games. So maybe Preventivo is some type of online game or like cheat or something like that. We also see the directory artifact. It likes talking to the photo and fax VN directory in the user's app data. And then we see some traffic that's um, associated with it. But that's enough of that. Let's actually dig into the Sherlock. And I'm not gonna go into the questions just yet. I always like looking at the data we're provided first and then going into the questions afterwards, right? And all that the Sherlock provides us is this Sysmon event log file. And my favorite way to parse EVTX files or event logs is gonna be through Chainsaw. I know a lot of people like um, like EVTX CMD or something, but that doesn't run well on, Win um, on Linux. It's more of a Windows thing. So if we just Google Chainsaw GitHub, we can download this. And the other thing I like about Chainsaw versus just like converting the event log to JSON right away is Chainsaw is going to allow us to do a lot of um, like Sigma searches and automatically find some malicious data to start a hunt with, right? So let's go ahead and extract a chainsaw. So we'll do 7ZX chainsaw. And I downloaded all platforms and everything just because this gives us, well, everything. Um, so if we go into chainsaw, I'm going to move the Linux executable name just to be chainsaw so it's easier to type and takes up less space. And then we wanna make this executable. So we'll do chmod plus X chainsaw. And to run this, I think we can just go to their GitHub page and they give us some examples, right? Let's see. Well, maybe I can do help. Let's just do dot slash chainsaw help. And let's see, hunt with Sigma rules and output in JSON. Um, I'm just going to hunt with uh, Sigma rules and then we won't do output in JSON. So I'll do dot slash chainsaw hunt and then instead of the um, samples that are in the chainsaw directory, I'm just gonna specify the EVTX file of us. Then we can do dash S sigma, and then the dash dash mapping. And I'm going to, um, let's see, we just go mappings, sigma, logs, all, there we go. So if we run this command, it's going to load the engine and then I'll put this, I'm gonna pack, pipe this over to less so we can see it a bit better. And since my font's so big, it's going off the screen. So I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller and we can see how this is outputting. I think it only gives us five events I think I saw, but um, it's a lot less to go through than probably a thousand lines that are in the log file, right? So the first thing that flagged is an executable creating another executable. And we can see the image that did that was preventivo 240214.exe.exe. So right off the bat, this is lining up with the um, research we had Googled. And it creates a task host.exe in that photo and fax directory, right? So we have another executable creating an executable. 
Um, the same thing, I believe, let's see, where is the image name, Preventivo. And this one's creating viewer.exe. So I'm gonna guess that is ultra VNC. And then we have file with system process name and unspecified location. This is creating task host.exe and C colon games. And then a event log in an uncommon location. I'm guessing this is just the creation of the Sherlock itself. So right off the bat, we see um, the Preventivo thing being suspicious. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to copy this process GUID and then we're gonna do some searching on it to see exactly what this did. So let's copy this entire string. Okay, and let's see, what else? Event record ID 11. In Sysmon, event ID 11 is going to be a file creation event. And we'll dig more into the Sysmon event IDs in just a little bit in this video, but um, let's just go ahead and look at this. So the other thing I can do with Chainsaw, instead of the hunt, I can do a search command. So I'm gonna do search, and then we're going to specify that process GUID. And what that's going to do is search the event log and output any event that has the GUID within it. And we get 53 hits, which is quite a bit. So instead of trying to um, parse all this, I'm just gonna copy it over to JSON with a dash dash JSON. And then we can use JQ dot, and this will help us write filters, right? If I look at the top of this JSON, we see we have a list and then dot event, and it goes into all the events. So we have system event ID. This is gonna be important because this is the Sysmon event ID. And then the second piece of data we have is the event data. And this is gonna be the data that's actually in the Sysmon event. So what we wanna do is have our dot, we're gonna go into that item or into the list, and then we're gonna do dot event and now if we look at the less, everything just has a system and event data. So what this is gonna allow us to do is now a search. So I'm going to say a pipe, and then we can say select, and then, um, what was it? System.eventID equals 11. And what this is now going to do is output every file that this process GUID had created. And I search by the process GUID because that's what like the whole purpose of a global unique identifier is, right? I can just search this string and I won't get any conflictions. If I just did like the process PID, that PID is gonna be a low number. That could just be contained within like text. Another process ID could have it. It may be in like the SID of a user. Like I don't like searching on process IDs just cause you can get a lot of conflictions, right? If you do GUID strings, you won't. So we have all the event ID 11s. So now I'm gonna say select the event data and show me target file name. And what this is gonna do is show us all the files this had created. So if we just pipe it over to less, we'll get a little bit better. And I think my camera's in the way. So let's turn this off so we can see everything. And we see the files it created, c.cmd, cmmc.cmd, on.cmd, once.cmd, taskers, viewer.exe. So we see a bunch of files this had created. So what else can we do with this, right? Um, if we look at, uh, let's see, this process GUID executing. Um, like an executable executing in sysmon is gonna be event ID one. So if I look at this, this is actually gonna allow me to grab the hash of the executable. So I'm just gonna copy the MD5 hash. So we can say copy. And then if I go to virus total, we can search this hash and then see if anyone has submitted the file. So if we search this, we see uh, this is probably the wrong file. If we go to details, it'll tell us probably what the file name, oh, msiexec.exe. So that was not it. Let's see. If we look at the original file name, msiexec, that's not what we want. We go up to another event. Let's see, uh, this image name is gonna be Preventivo. The original name is Fitora2.2024.exe, but we have a different MD5. So let's grab this MD5. So we'll copy this. Then we can go and search this hash. 
And there we go. We have it being malicious, 50 out of 73 hits. We see the original name here. And let's um, go over to like the behavior tab. And I think probably my um, dark reader plugin is making virus turtle behave very slowly. Uh, yes, stop. Refresh. This may not work. Okay, there we go. And it refreshed. Let's see, come on, give me that behaviors tab. There we go. You can kind of see what it's doing. Um, initial access, execution, um, all the rules it matched, um, HTTP request it makes. So we can see a lot of information about this executable without ever having the executable, right? So that's just the power of all these malware sandboxes. I know there's other ones other than virus total, but let's keep going on, right? So let's see, what else should we look at with this? Um, I'm gonna Google real quick, Sysmon event IDs. And is there DNS? Which one is, isn't showing all of them, right? Sys internals. Ah, dark reader on. Why is that not dark mode? Let's see, more items. Where is it? Okay. So we have, where is DNS? Uh, event ID 22. So we can do the same thing and then 22. And now we're going to suddenly see all the um, queries this executable had made, right? So this is gonna be the power of Sysmon. And I know a lot of organizations just don't install Sysmon because they're not doing um, centralized logging. So like, well, if I don't have Splunk or Elastic, then why do I want to increase the logging on my computers? The answer is, if you have any event, like um, you think you're breached, Sysmon logs are something that's going to really aid any type of IR. Like we didn't have to spend any time at all with this, because we could just grab the Sysmon log, do a hunt, run the Sigma searches, and now we can just look at um, what processes are doing. So even if you don't have Splunk, Elastic, which you definitely should have some type of way to search all the logs in a central location, should still install Sysmon because being able to go back in time and look at what processes did in a very easy way is something that's gonna save you a lot of time and money, right? So this is the type of stuff we can do with Sysmon. So let's go ahead and look at the questions. So the first question is gonna be, how many event logs are there with event ID 11? And I said earlier, event ID 11 is going to be a file create event. So let's go ahead and look at this. So how can we get all the event ID 11s? Well, the easy way would be, um, we could just say this and I was hoping that would say like um, how many hits it had. We could probably just do grep event data. Oh, well on the process GUID, that's why. Um, if we did dump, then WC-L, 56. But that's not a good way to do that. Like that's kind of cheesing the question. Um, I think what the question wants you to do is analyze all the events in the Sysmon data, which is something you should do because this is gonna tell you what type of data you have to work with going down the line. So what we're going to do is dump the entire um, data into JSON. So we're going to do the chainsaw dump, just convert this to JSON and then call this sysmon.out. And let's see. I'm just gonna move sysmon.out outside of the chainsaw directory because we no longer need chainsaw. We can now um, just play with all this data. So if I cat sysmon.out, then we can say jq. We have the data of the entire event. Let's see, I'm gonna do the um, this event. And let's see, we want to select the event data, oh no. Um, system dot event ID. Okay, so we have all the Sysmon events here. 
Then I'm going to do a sort. Then we do a unique dash C. And then I'm going to, because right here, this column is going to be my sysmon event. Uh, yeah, this is sysmon event, and this is how many times it has appeared in the log. I just want to reverse these two numbers. So I'm going to do a awk, and we can say print dollar two, and I'll do a colon dollar three, or dollar one actually, because I want to go from the second one to the first. And there we go. We have this in a pretty format. I'm just going to sort dash n. So it goes right in the order. I'm going to call this, um, let's call it meta dot. CSV, I guess. I don't know exactly what to call it, but event ID one, we have six, event ID two, we have 16, three, we have one, and so on. So what I'm gonna do real quick is, let's just go ahead and label these. So one is gonna be process create. Two is change create time. Three, network connection. Five is going to be process terminate. Seven, image loaded. So that's going to be like loading a DLL, I believe. Create, uh, we don't have eight. This would be process injection, things like that. Process access is 10. And I normally look at 10 right away. If we see anything talking to like LSAS, that's going to be Mimikatz, things like that. Um, 11 is going to be file create. We've already dug into that. Uh, 12 is registry event create. So we'll call this registry create. 13 is registry set. 15, file create stream hash. So I think that's alternate data streams. I'm not exactly positive. We can look at the data that's logged and see if that makes sense. But normally when you download a file with a web browser, it will create something in the alternate data stream. I believe it's, that's the right terminology. That just says this has came from the internet. So when you double click an executable, it pops up like Windows Smart Screen, making sure you actually want to execute it. Um, 17 is gonna be pipe event. And this is probably create. 22, DNS. 23 is going to be file delete. And then finally, the last one, 26, is file delete detected. I don't know the difference between these two. Um, I read it like yesterday when I was uh, preparing to record this video and then immediately forgot exactly what it is. But you may want to look at the difference between file delete and file delete detected, or maybe it'll just naturally come up in this video. I'm not exactly positive where we will go. I don't have that many notes to go off on. So that's gonna be everything we have. Um, I wanna look at the event ID 10, just cause I wanna see what is the process accessing. So let's go ahead and go back here and we can do a select on system.eventID equals 11. And let's see. We have, oh, it was 10, not 11. There we go. So let's see, Cyber Junkie is the user. It is Ping Sender and Firefox, which this is normal. So this isn't really much to go off on. We also have the call trace, which can be um, helpful in identifying like Cobalt Strike and things like that. But this Ping Sender Firefox, it's not raising any immediate red flags. And if the call trace was suspicious, I expect like our um, Sigma detections would have flagged it or something like that. And this is looking like it's pretty much staying within Firefox. So um, nothing really go off from there. But let's go ahead and answer the first question. How many event were with 11? I wanna say that was 56. We called it meta.csv, 11, 56. So 56, submit. There we go. So whenever a process is created in memory, whenever a process is created in memory, okay, an event ID with one is recorded with details such as command line, whatever, right? 
which means we can spot any malicious process being executed. What is the malicious process that infected the user system? We already know this is Preventivo from like doing the open source research by just searching unit 42 ultra VNC. We saw it in the chainsaw hunt, um, but let's look at all event ID ones. So we're gonna search by one, and then I'm going to select, uh, let's do not original file name, image. So we'll do event data dot image. And these are all the programs that ran. So we have ping sender from Firefox. So we know Firefox is running. We have this Preventivo and a bunch of MSI exec. Well, based upon just this data, it's definitely gonna be this as the malicious one, right? Cause this is the one the user downloaded. Um, it probably doesn't want those double backslashes. So I'm gonna do a dash R to do raw. And we can copy this and paste it. Submit. Okay. Which cloud drive was used to distribute the malware? Well, we're going to assume this is um, Dropbox, right? Because that's what the open source research said. However, assuming is never a good thing. So let's go ahead and cat our meta again. Let's look at all the DNS events. So that's gonna be 22. So if we look at 22, then we can say a um, event data dot query name. There's only three DNS requests, uh, Dropbox example and this. Um, let's see. It's definitely Dropbox, but I don't like that answer. Let's, wh where could we pivot off of this? So let's go up and let's see exactly what queried Dropbox, right? So this is gonna be this GUID, which that looks like the Preventivo GUID, right? So let's see. Try and think of a good way to show this. We could just do the, um, what is it? Event data dot process GUID. So I, yep, is equal to, I think that has to be in quotes. There we go. Oh, Firefox is querying it. Awesome. So that may not be the Preventivo thing. This is going to be Firefox. So we see Firefox makes a request here to Dropbox. I want to see the actual download. See, we got that process GUID search. So what we can do after that is um, let's search for the event ID um, 11. So this is gonna be all the files that Firefox created. So we'll do select event data dot, oh no, this is gonna be system event ID is equal to 11. Awesome. And let's select target file name and it's event data dot that. So this is gonna be the files that um, Firefox created. So we see it creating this random dot exe. And this is just how Firefox generally downloads. It creates um, various parts, downloads each of them. And then when it completes, it renames it to the file, right? It's going to complete this, scan it with safe screen and then if it passes, it will rename it to what the download was. We have it right here, creating the alternate data stream telling us that it came from the internet. But we can see um, this is likely going to be where the Dropbox came from. If we looked at all the timestamps, it should line up. Um, so let's just go and type Dropbox, submit. Okay. The initial malicious file timestamped a defense Initial file timestamp defense evasion technique where the file creation date is changed to make it appear older. Many files it created on disk. What is the timestamp change to the PDF file? Maybe this meant to say time stomped. That's normally what I uh, reference to it, but let's look at our event IDs again. So if I cat meta, we can see, uh, let's see, there is a change create time. 
So event ID two. So let's do event ID is equal to two. And it wants the PDF. So what I'm going to do is do a dash C. And what dash C is gonna do is it puts every event on one line. So what that means I can do is now I can grep for a PDF and then I can pipe it back to JQ and see the PDF. So it wants, what is the timestamp change to? So this is the previous one was February 14th and it changes to January 14th. So we can just copy this timestamp. It only wants up to the seconds. We can paste this in, submit, and we got it. So the malicious file dropped a few files on disk. Where was once.cmd created? Again, we're just gonna use the um, grep trick. So I'm gonna change this to 11. Then we can grep for once.cmd. And we're going to see when this was created, right? A few files. How many events is this? Why do we have two? Do we have two? System, event data. Nope, we only have one. So the UTC time here. Event ID 11. Okay. All this data up here always confuses me, but this is all like um, sys, like the event log data. So task 11, um, event IDs 11, right? Yes. Let's just grab this. Oh, full path. Please answer the full path of the file along with the file name. So we want to get that target file name, um, event data, target file name. Oh, it's two events. There we go. So I'm guessing it gets created and then moved here was once.cmd, and that's what was confusing me. Let's see. I'm gonna shrink some of the data. So I want to see just the event data. Okay, that's better. So rule name. Okay, so we have preventivo creating once.cmd, and we also have MSI exec creating once.cmd. So two things did, I'm guessing Preventivo executed MSI exec, which then did something else. The malware attempts to reach a dummy domain, most likely to check internet connection. What domain did the malware connect to? I think that was example.com, right? We could go back to the DNS, which that was event ID 22. And since it wants us to talk about malware, we can always say dash C grep for preventivo, right? And then pipe that back to JQ. And then we have the query name here. So example.com, there we go. Which IP did the malicious process attempt to reach out to? Um, we can do the same exact thing, except now we want to um, look at the network connection. So that's gonna be event ID three. So let's do three. And the destination IP is this. Submit. The malicious process terminated itself after infecting the PC with a backdoor variant of Ultra VNC. 
when did the process terminate itself? So let's go ahead and look at that. So let's see. We wanna go back into meta and we have terminate, where is this? Event ID five. And there's only one event. So that makes this super easy, like barely an inconvenience, right? So if we just look at event ID five and we get the timestamp of this, we can paste it. And that's the Sherlock. Um, how I would normally have done this is I would have looked at the like GUID, right? So if we went back to event ID one and we want to find that prevent. So let's see. We don't want MSI exec image here. So this is going to be the GUID of this. Um, let's see, we can get rid of this whole select and I'm going to be lazy and instead of writing a query to um, search for the process GUID, I'm just going to do dash C. We can grep on the GUID and then pipe this back to JQ. And let's see, I'm going to do a JQ and let's select, um, we're going to do a list because I want to select two things. Um, system dot event ID. And then I also want to get the event. And we have to make sure we close out the single quote, um, the event data, that's what it calls it. And there we go. We have the sysmon event thing and then the data around this. So we want to look at event five and this is going to be the termination of this image, right? So that's going to be the um, video, right? Uh, actually, there is one thing I wanted to show. We could just see everything this GUID did. Um, this is gonna, something else that I find handy. So instead of selecting all this data, we grep this and then we just select the event uh, sysmon thing. So let's do, um, what is it? System event. ID. That GUID has a lot of things. Okay. So this is the GUID for um, Preventivo. At least I hope it is. Yeah, it was. So if I do a for loop on this, so we can do for I in this, do echo I, done. Uh, we have a syntax error because I did not put a in. Okay. So instead of just echoing I, I'm going to do a grep on I on a meta file. And why am I doing that? Because that's going to translate it to the human names, right? So here I can now do awk-f on colon. We can print three. And then like magic, we can see everything this GUID had done. Um, this is too many events. We messed up somewhere. I wonder if this is selecting too much. That feels like a lot. Maybe it's not. Let's see, WC-L 164. Let's get rid of the grep here. Uh, JQ dot. 300. So no, I don't think we um, grab too much. This is the process GUI to prevent Evo, right? Uh, let's go back to one of the selects. Uh, event ID one, that's exactly what I wanted. Where is the process GUID of this? It's the parent image, that's MSI exec still. MSI exec still. Preventivo. 
this is the GUID I want. Is this what I was searching? I don't think it was. 817? I think it is. Yep. So that is the event GUID. So um, this is a good way just to see kind of what a um, program was doing on the box to get human readable stuff, right? And then you can uh, go in and say, oh, what files were deleted? Instead of doing this for loop now, we just go back to where we had this big grep. That's still a for loop. Cat it, there we go. Um, this is just selecting the event ID. So we can say select um, dot event data system, not event data. Okay, event ID is equal to what is the delete um, 26 and 23. So we'll do 26. That should have worked. One. Something is wrong. Something's not making sense to me. Oh, we have to start of line and semicolon. That's getting file deletes. So what I'm confused about real quick, and I wish I did not go into this beyond root because we're seeing file deletes here, but when I selected, I did not see that. which means one of our queries is getting data that it should not be, which means I did something really wrong. We do, let's see, let's grab this. That's a query run. We do get 23. 23 is indeed file delete. Maybe I had a typo. Let's see. I probably had a typo. Yeah, I don't know where I got 26 from. I'm an idiot. 26 is the number of times file delete happened. Oh man. Okay, now the world is making sense. So we can do 23 and then say, um, this is gonna be file deleted. So it's probably target file name. So event data dot target file name. And there we go, here's all the deleted files. You can do less dash S and then I can hide my camera so you can read all the files. It deletes all the temps and then deletes everything out of the photo and fax directory. And here we can even see the ultra VNC display DLL viewer. And I think it's deleting these because it copies them into C colon backslash games, right? This is just the install um, directory. So with that being said, that's going to wrap up the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care and I will see you all next time.